Good morning, morning everyone. Hmm? Should we start slowly? Is everyone ready? Yep. yep. Beautiful. So, hey you, get off my network. Uh, I think it's a very interesting name, right? And I hope the session is going to be interesting. You're going to love it. My name is Arda Loskaya. My name is Elias Mareb. We are both of an MVP, MCT. On top of it, I'm a licensed penetration tester, working in the field, doing many penetration testing for, for the government in Australia. Mm -hmm. By the way, welcome home. I'm from Sydney, and this is the Sydney Motorium. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, they wanted me to feel home. I came all the way from Australia. Uh, probably you noticed my accent, but seriously, this is not my fault. I got Turkish parents, but I was born and grew up in Germany, living in Australia. This is what's coming out, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will try to make my accent unvisible as much as possible. We prepared you a couple of, uh, lots of demos actually, yep. nice slides, and Elias. I'll be helping with some demos. Uh, one thing that you need to know about this session is this, is that this session is uh, coming from the field to the field. It's not a Microsoft session. It's about our experiences with our clients and what we see in the real world. And we wanted to uh, share this experience with you guys. So, Erdo. OK, what's the agenda? And we got two sections. In the first section, we are going to show you how you can hack proof your service. And in the second section, I'm going to try to explain you what is penetration testing. Now, let's be honest penetration testing by itself. It's a five days training class. So I do teach, probably you saw the CI, I'm a certified ethical instructor. So we did try to claim as much possible information as we can fit in the session. So don't expect to be a licensed penetration tester just after 75 minutes. But I hope you're gonna get the most out of it. And we prepared lots of demos. So mm -hmm. um, I got here a couple of presents as well. I got a full version of GFI Langard couple of uh, Windows 7 geeks, training CDs. So if you ask good question, end of the session, you win one of the prizes, OK? Keep switch on, and I hope you, like, you are going to love the session. So can I please see your hands? Here is the end user here. Do we got an end user? I'm asking for courtesy, by the way. <laughs> uh, any, anyone who is involved with security? Any IT professionals, developers? Not realize. <laughs> um, my question is, is security part of your job? Look, I don't care what your job role is. You might be an end user, or you might be a software developer, or an IT pro, or anyone, so decision maker. Question is, is security part of your job? Do you got anyone who says no? I was going to ask to go to the reception, ask for a refund. This is the wrong, <laughs> wrong conference. OK, beautiful. <laughs> Um, the main issue is everyone is involved with security because security doesn't have any boundaries. If your end user makes a mistake, the company is going to probably pay for it or you, you're going to pay for it with your time. So we, we have to be very careful when it comes to security because we know we got hackers around. We have bad people around. The second question is, is all the bad people outside our boundaries, outside the network? No. As you, as you know, most of the hacking activities happens internal of the network. That's why in our second part, I'm going to show you how to do internal penetration testing and also external penetration testing. If you don't take care of security, then someone else is going to be inside and taking care of your network. And I'm pretty sure this taking care is not going to be what you want. If you want to be prevented from hacking, you have to be careful from A to Z. We, we all know that, and I'm happy to see most of the hands involved. That's why I'm going with this slide fast. But uh, the other question is, how safe is your computer? Can you tell me if you scream? How safe is your computer? Can you, can you say, I got the safest computer, I can assure it. Can you assure it to me, sir? No? Who, who can say it has the safest computer in the world right now? Uh, oh, it, it is plugged off? 
Beautiful. <laughs> Plus the power is turned off and it's in a safe, right? If it's this case, yes, it is the safest computer in the world. Otherwise, I'm going to prove you that it's not. So the, the technique that we are going to show you, please don't use it at home, right? Uh, <laughs> Please, 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 be careful when you scan someone else's network. Especially if it's NASA, the government, you know. I promise you, someone is going to be in your door within two hours. Promise. Um, you should always, if you're going to do any penetration testing, you should always get legal authority. And please, 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 be careful when you, when you use these techniques. So, Best practice to keep in mind. Actually, this is the golden rule. If someone wants to hack you, there is no way you can stop them. The only thing which you can do is make their job harder. We all know these this, uh, excuses. When it comes to security, there is no excuses. Now, cost too much money. Who has the enough budget for security? Please, hands. Oh, I got one someone there. Really? You are not kidding, right? Are you working for a bank or government? No. Ah, government, okay. Yeah. We pay tax for that. No worries. <laughs> uh, cost too much money. Look, out of two, three hundred people, we, got, we had only one hand. But we all know cost too much money excuse, right? Or it's too complicated. I better not touch it. Or not what the butter, someone else, the other team, security team is going to take care. Oh, no, no. The deployment team is going to take care. Oh, no, the CEPHO developer is going to take care. You know what? My simple firewall, I'm not mentioning any brand here, is going to protect me. Good luck. We have got a solution. One solution when it comes to security is not a solution. We should implement more than one solution. Why? You're going to see it shortly. So if you got all the same issue, the budget issue, what is if we show you a couple of free tools? When I say free tools, I assume you bought the Windows license, OK? So Windows license is not free. Um, but now you got your Windows license. You install your Windows license. and. From now on, the next half an hour, we're going to show you all the free tools, which most of you hear about it. But I can assure you, more than half of you didn't implement it. We're going to do a survey in, at, at the end of the session. I've done this session a couple of times uh, in a different format. And every time, I prove myself. So I hope you will prove me wrong. My first recommendation is going to be use Server 2008 R2 Core. Who is using all the services as core? Hands, please. Very few people. Why? Because there is no graphical interface, right? It's hard to use. Coming back to the same excuse, it's too complicated. But the idea behind this, because there is no graphical interface, because of that, there is a reduced maintenance. And because of this, no gra graphical interface means less reduced attack surface area which is going to lead you to reduce management and less this space. Please t write it down, and you'll be surprised end of this part how free tools, which is available, is not being used by you. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you saw how Server, uh, Server 2008 Core works, right? It's just a command prompt, and you have to do everything via MS-DOS. App locker. So yeah, uh, a blocker. Let's switch. Oh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Uh, App Locker. What is App Locker? App Locker replaces the software restriction policy feature in Windows XP, which you probably used before. What is giving Server 2008 R2 and Windows 7 to us? It is making sure that App Locker is reducing the our overheads, so we can just have a software. For example, Adobe Acrobat. It's up to me now if my end users can use it or not. Elias is going to show us how we can allow or deny a policy. Elias? Yeah, sure. Um, again, as, as Erdl has been saying, um, the tools that we're going to be showing is more about the uh, proactive uh, approach of security. So is it on the one? Yeah. 
Hold on. Yep. There you go. So uh, right here, I'm running uh, Windows Server 2008 R2. And either way, uh, what you need to do is, is go ahead and create a policy. You can do it through uh, Group Policy Management Console, or for this example, you guys, we can just uh, run uh, GP edit dot msc and the idea behind this is that we can create uh, policies to block uh, specific uh, software or we can just audit what software is uh, our users are running on our client computers so if we go out to computer configuration and, after, and to windows settings and scroll down to security settings and then to application control policies we'll find app locker as Ertl said uh, app locker is meant to be it's meant to replace software uh, to, be, to replace software restriction policies it's software restriction policies on asteroids basically so what we want to do is we have the option to create executable rules uh, windows installer rules and also script rules Right now, for this demo, we're going to create an executable rule. And what we need to do is very simple. Just right-click the right panel and create default rules. And after that, we're going to create a new rule. Uh, and we're going to be prompted with a wizard. And what we need to do here is to determine the action, to allow or deny this, uh, this, this, uh, this rule, the, the, act, the uh, supplication, and the user or the uh, specific group. So we're going to deny it for everyone. And and the cool thing about AppLocker is that we now uh, have the option to, to block software uh, using the publisher. So we usually in software restriction policies, we have uh, the option to create a hash, a, a path. But now we have the option to create uh, a rule using publisher. So we can browse for our executable. I, I don't have anything against Adobe, but <laughs> I'm going to uh, find Acrobat Reader. And if the application is assigned, it will uh, collect all the information. And you look, I have a scroll bar where I can say, go and use custom values and select, hey, I want to uh, block, deny this application for any version that is above or below or exactly this uh, version because I may have compatibility issues. Or I just can, can go straight and, and block the product name or the publisher. I'm going to go straight and block everything from Adobe right now and hit Create. So if I go to, to Adobe Reader, it's blocked by group policy. Very simple. If I want to allow, I can just go and click Allow, OK, and Adobe Reader will open. So uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you is that in Windows 7, and Windows Server 2008, we have a service. You need to have this service running. The server is called uh, Application Identity. And what it does basically is it's a layer in the OS that is constantly uh, you know, checking out what the application, uh, what applications are running. So here it is. If you create a group policy to uh, set to a start automatically on all your computers and create the, the list of, of rules and applications, you will be uh, all set. Look, Erdo. So, this was one of the benefits. Can you switch the slide, please? So, as you can see, AppLocker is going to block the software that you don't want in your network, and hopefully, the vulnerability is not going to exist this way or less. Biometrics. We know all what biometric is. The biggest benefit of Server 2008 R2 is it is uh, giving us ease of use biometrics, which means now we can use the UAC inbuilt biometrics. Basically, instead of entering the password all the time, you can just swap your finger. What else? You can perform basic management via your fingerprints. Again, Server 2008 R2 is making your job easier. And this is taking your physical security up. Now, when it's come to Security, hacking, ethical hacking. Please don't forget, it's not all about computers. It is also about the physical boundaries. So you cannot differentiate. You can't just say, I don't care about physical security. If someone has a physical access, they got also 
all kinds of access. What else? We can use uh, biometrics and we can publish it by a group policy. What I'm going to recommend is smart cards as well. What is smart card doing? If you're working for a corporation, you cannot log in uh, to your computers because of smart cards. And so 2008R2 is giving us lots of variety of tasks to make the, the, the installment and usage much, much easier. So finally, so 2008R2 has many options when it's come to deployment mm -hmm. of a smart card. Password. I'm pretty sure even my son, he's eight years old, he knows why a password should be strong. Anyone has hesitation about passwords? Instead of talking about passwords, I'm just going to switch to my demonstration. Um, ah, it's there. Not this one. Let me log in. My password is, no, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, Windows 7 and Server 1000 R2 did remove the LMA hashes. So what is this doing? A good example of this is, for example, I can just load a software via PS exec or uh, with sys internals utilities remotely to the computer, to the victim computer, and I can just, for example, this is the memory of local computer. I can use a proactive password auditor software, press and dump. It will brute force the computer, and with two, three clicks, I promise not to tell you my password, but can you see it? It's there. Let's do the same thing in Windows 7 or Server 1000 R2. And I can assure you it's not going to work. If I can find the shortcut. Here we go. I run the same software. It goes through. Hey, it done the enumeration. It did extract the usernames, but not the passwords. This is one more reason for you why you should use Server 2008 in, uh, in your network environment. Again, um, how can you make sure your, the password is secure? You can use a tool like Knable. Here is my Knable. It's freely available on the internet. I will give you the website's data to download. And all the slides are going to be available for you to download right after the session. You can just go. Um, start sniff the computers. At this stage, what I've done is I went to sniffing mode. I selected my XP to be sniffed via the router. And it's just this button here. I press that button. Then I come to sniffing mode. Uh, when I click the plus button, and go to my XP first. Oops. Whatever the XP user does here, goes to the internet, for example, a website, optus.com.au. Oops, this is Australian, but doesn't matter. It's just a website. And what Knable is going to do is it's going to sniff sniff the network. And hopefully, do you see if you have um, internet connectivity on the virtual machine? Uh, yeah. And once the sniffing works, basically it's gonna list all the visited websites. Yeah, internet connectivity is not there. But if basically if the internet was working at the background, it was just going to list all the visited websites, password by a few clicks. Again, you can use these kinds of tools easily. Again, sorry, I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> Short, but it's not part of the demo anyway. But what I was trying to tell you is softwares like can enable or password dump can easily, can I take a question at the end of the session? Uh, can easily help us to get the information from the other side. And yes, most of the antiviruses are catching this up, but you can, it's an open source tool. You can always modify it, make a zero day attack, and execute it in your remote computers. So 
uh, remove LMs, you saw how easy it was to get Windows, 7, uh, Windows XP passwords. And I did try to show you that it's not possible now with Windows 7 or Server 1000 R2. Service accounts. I'm pretty sure you know what a service account is. It is basically simplifying or eliminating the SPNs, which is the service principal names. Uh, server 1000 R2, it comes in two flavors, which is the managed service account, mm -hmm. which is providing us applications such as SQL. It is isolating the SQL service account from my administrative account. This way, if someone does a SQL injection, they will just take care of my SQL, not my domain. Yeah, this is still a big issue. I do agree, but at least I can still protect my other stuff. What else? There is uh, virtual accounts. Again, virtual accounts are there to having a managed local accounts to make the network resources to be used easier for us. UAC, I'm pretty sure anyone did use Vista in the auditorium here. Many of us. And while you use Vista, did you turn it off? Because it was beautiful. It, is, it was not a recommendation, but many IT pros said, you know what? This is popping up so much. I don't want to use it anymore. With Server 1000 R2, or Windows 7 as well, now, as you all know, we, can, we, know, uh, how, we know that there are many options mm -hmm. that you can um, increase the security. And, and um, basically, having different options from control panel to control UAC. There is a session about UAC this afternoon at 5 PM in the room. B309, you will see how you can uh, be able to customize the UAC. So I'm not going to touch this here. I'm leaving to the 5 PM session. Raymond is going to have a great session later. Windows security auditing. Who does not have a car? Um, most of us buy secondhand cars, right? Or if you're buying a brand new car, you usually go to your favorite search engine. You make a research about the car before you buy it. Why? Because you don't want to buy a lemon. When you buy a second-hand car, you go and ask for the service logbox. Do you? I hope you do. Why? This way you can see what was used in this car. It's not different in your server environment. You should check the audit logs. Why? The audit logs is going to tell you the whole history, what is going on with your computers. When it's come to server cars, 8R2, now uh, auditing has been integrated to group policy. And it is giving us much more details compared to previous editions. We got three new enhancements, which is the global object access auditing. Then we got the reason for access reporting, which I really love. So you might be the administrator. Yes, we got robust administration, but why are you visiting this, or what are you doing in here? Please specify, which is extra security features to block the people there inside. Remember, we had most of the people inside, most of the hackers, bad, bad people inside. And the third one is advanced audit policy settings, which can be used. One more recommendation. I don't know if you noticed, so far, uh, besides your Windows license, nothing was for money. So the excuse, the budget excuse, shouldn't be the excuse anymore. SCW. Who never used SCW before? Sorry? Who never used the security configuration visit before? We have a couple of hands. It's, um, you know, it's basically running a scan in your computer. Elias, can you please um, yeah, sure. demonstrate it for us? Instead of me going to a slide, I think it's going to be better. So you need to switch back. Oops. So yeah, so basic, basically security configuration, which is a tool that's been available since Windows Server 2003 uh, SP1. And we can find it on their initiative tools, security configuration wizard, or just SCW. And this tool, what it does is that it helps us to harden our servers, so to reduce the attack surface. Basically, we're going through a wizard 
that uh, after we set up all our servers, uh, our production servers, and we know that we are not going to install anything more on, on th those servers, then we can harden and disable all the services uh, and you know services uh, accounts, uh, so ports. So basically, if we go uh, through the wizard very quick, we can create a new security policy uh, for this specific server or remote server, and it will scan our computer very quick. And after we scan uh, our computer, we can view a configuration uh, database with all the roles, client features, services, et cetera. And after that, we can still go through the wizard and start, start a, a role-based configuration. So uh, we need to, to check which roles are installed uh, indeed in our server, uh, because the ones that we uh, don't check won't be available. It won't be totally blocked. So uh, in this case, I have DNS server, the HTTP server. This is the ones that I'll keep uh, check. Um, and I can go through the whole wizard. But for example, if I uh, want to uh, disable services, this is what the, ser the services that will be uh, changed, they will be disabled by this policy. I can go to the network security, which is uh, uh, very important, and I can say that um, all, all the rules that I want to, to allow. If I uncheck, for example, all going UDP traffic, uh, <laughs> we're going to get into a lot of, of trouble into our network, right? And we can uh, modify, obviously, our, the registry to specify uh, how uh, server message block traffic is going to be handled. Uh, to, uh, we can also uh, select how the servers uh, are going to authenticate with more computers. Um, and so on. So we have also an audit policy, like uh, Erdl said, so we can uh, harden our audit policy. And after that, we can save our security policy, let's say, in the desktop. And I can apply that policy right now, or I can uh, apply it later. So if I, let's say, apply it later, I will get my configuration right here. And let's say that I apply it right now, but I need to install a different, a different or another role. I can go back uh, to the tool, the security configuration wizard, and I can just apply an existing security policy, roll back to the ones that I had, uh, just scan the server once again, install the, the, the different role that's said. SharePoint, for example, and then create a new policy on it. So basically, it's about to harden our uh, servers and reduce the attack surface. Erdl? Again, a free tool which is scanning your computers and giving you recommendations. It, is disa it will disable the unnecessary services. It will detect the role dependencies. Um, please be careful. If you're using Exchange, for example, on that PC, please make sure you go to the Exchange setup visit and uh, copy the XML file. So let SCW know what kind of computer you're using. Otherwise, it's going to say, hey, port 25 is open. Please block it. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to step in your Exchange. It, uh, if necessary, if you don't know what to do, it will give you hot links and it will help you to deploy it via group policy. Again, don't forget, in the second section, we're going to use different tools to hack this, to, 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 you know, this is the first section to show you what's going on, what, what should you do to make sure that second section is uh, less dependent. Exactly. The, the, first, the first part of, of the session is about more the proactive approach of security, and then the second part is more of the reactive approach. Remember, I was talking about a solution. I have a couple of uh, mid-sized businesses. They believe their small home base firewall is going to protect them from um, attacks. They believe just Windows firewall is going to uh, block them from attack. Please keep in mind, Windows firewall is for IT professionals, especially the advanced features. It's not designed for home users. And the biggest benefit, can I use your PC for a small demo? Yeah, sure. Can you switch again? E. 
the biggest benefit which I believe about Windows Firewall is you can come to your group policy and you can come to Windows settings, security settings, Windows Firewall with advanced policy, and look at this. Now, it's not like XP anymore, remember? You had turn on, turn off, and exceptions. You can fully create inbound and outbound rules. You can uh, create connection security rules and deploy it via group policy to whole across your organization. That's why I would highly recommend you to use the Windows Firewall as well. Another thing very important is that right here is where you control all the IPsec rules right now in, from Windows Vista uh, to 7. seven. So. Uh, if you still, anyone migrated to IPv6? No? You know, uh, IP security is not going to be, the protocol is not going to be an issue anymore with IPv6 because it's enabled by default. So all your communication is going to be uh, automatically encrypted via IPsec, IP security. I'm pretty sure most of you already do this. I hope you do. Disabling the insecure user accounts. As we all know, Windows is installing since very early days two types of accounts, admin and guest. Guess is uh, disabled. I hope admin account has been renamed to something else and disabled in your computers as well. Yes? Can I see hands, please? See, half of the auditorium didn't done it. So uh, maybe you will say, hey, Earl, come on. Is this what you're telling me? But please, don't forget. You might done it, sir, but we had someone at the back there who didn't raise a hand. Because many people, they, they don't want to touch it because they said, you know what? Uh, if I don't touch it, it won't break, and nothing will happen. It's too complicated. So when it comes in terms of security, it is important to take control of everything as much as you can. So BitLocker, again, it was introduced with Vista in 2008. It is a great feature, which is giving us encryption. And this encryption is better even if you got a TPM uh, chip in your motherboard, which gives you a higher grade of encryption. And the good thing is now we can use group policy, right? Elias, yeah. can you please show us how we can quickly deploy BitLocker? Yeah, sure. Uh, like Earl said, we have uh, group policies uh, that control BitLocker. So we, we can go to group policy and then we have templates, Windows components. And under Windows Components, we can find um, BitLocker Drive Encryption. You can see that we have the options for fixed data drive, operating systems, and removal data drive. Uh, in this particular scenario, we're trying to secure our servers, uh, let's say uh, servers that we have on branches. Uh, Vertal said the first, the first step, the first recommendation is to install uh, Windows Server Core. So server core supports also BitLocker, so you can uh, encrypt your hard drive. Uh, like also Erdl said, uh, you need a, a TPN, a trusted platform module. But if you don't have one, you can open the required additional authentication and start up. And as soon as you enable this policy, uh, you can uh, or either say allow TPM, and this will, all, if you don't have a TPM chip on your motherboard, uh, you can use a USB drive or you can require, and this will indeed require a TPM chip on your board. So you can also configure a pin. So as soon as your server boot up, you can just type a, a password plus the requirement of having the USB or the TPM. So what does TPM again? Can you please tell Trust us? Trust platform module. It's, it's a chip that is embedded on your, on your motherboard. One thing to, to know also is that now with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2, we have BitLocker to go which allows us to, uh, to encrypt a uh, removable USB drive. So if we have our clients, we can uh, encrypt the USB drive either with a pass using a password or smart cards. And the cool thing about it is that if you're uh, encrypting hard laptop drive, hard drive or USB drive, we can set up a policy to store the recovery key in Active Directory so the user doesn't need to remember the, the password. Again. Um, we are just covering a bit of it. If you want to have more information about BitLocker, AppLocker, please go to mspacket.com. Um, I did deliver with Jeremy Moskovich and Ellen a um, couple of sessions before. You can just search our names, and you can watch 
the whole video how you can implement it step by step. This is just showing you the, you know, it's like wine tasting. We're just showing you, I hope you will like it and <laughs> learn a bit more about it. NAP. Anyone using uh, network access protection? Hands, please. OK. What is NAP? NAP is basically, it's like when you come uh, from overseas, you know, we have to fill all, all these films every time when you enter to America. So do you got this? Do you got this? And if you got one of the disallowed items, they take it to quarantine and they double check if it's been allowed to take it to America or not. Same in Australia, same in European countries. Well, how is this implemented in our computer environment? We are here in the conference. You go to one of the booths. You want this little CD from me, OK? And you want to learn to do Windows 10 deployment by Rhonda. You know, Rhonda is one of her speakers in TechEd. This is the whole recorded sessions of her about Windows 10 deployment. One of you is going to win it. You install this, but this one doesn't have it, but it's just an example. Say, while you're installing it, this one is disabling your Windows updates. And when you go on Monday to work, there was an important update released, but your computer is not up to date. As soon as you plug your cable into the corporate environment, NAP is going to scan your computer and it's going to say, hey, you know what? You are not filling, fulfilling the requirements to get an IP address. And based on your selection, it's going to give you two, set, two options. A, direct you to, re, to a remediation server and helping you get fixed. B, ask you to call administrator or help desk to fix it. So NAP is a cool tool which you can implement as a role and secure your environment. Highly recommend it again. MBSA, Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer. Hands again. Who never used it? other way around. We got some hands. Uh, look, I'm going to do a demonstration based on uh, other products, commercial products, which does similar thing. MSB, uh, MBSA is checking your computer based according Microsoft security policies, and it is ch looking at the recommendation and telling you, hey, you should do this or that. Elias, instead of me talking, can you please quickly demonstrate it to us? Of course. You can go to Microsoft.com slash download, type MBSA or to your favorite search engine, download it. It's a small package, two megabytes, less than two megabytes, I think. Yeah. So basically, we have Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer 2.2. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward tool. Basically, we can scan, scan a computer or a, a multiple computers at the same time. Um, we can specify the computer name, the IP address, if we want to scan just one computer, or if we want to scan multiple computers, we can uh, set the IP range. Again, like Errol said, there are a lot of tools that do this, but they are paid tools, uh, so this is free. So if I go ahead and, and uh, go to a scan my computer, I have several options, like check for administrative vulnerabilities, check weak passwords, uh, and one very important um, option is to check for security updates. So um, let's go ahead and start the scan. It's going to download security updates uh, from uh, the update catalog. And it will take a few seconds. After it downloads the security updates, it will scan my computer with all the options that I previously selected. And I will get a final report. There we go. So as you can see, I have um, several things like, that I can correct, like uh, the password expiration, uh, incomplete updates, the, the Windows firewall. But I have also good things. I have, uh, correct, I have the, the local password test. I pa have passed the automatic updates, the file system, the auto logon. Oh, it's checking also the passwords, right? Yeah, Remember I was trying to demonstrate can enable? Uh, but why go and download a third party tool which is open source, which you don't know? Microsoft, uh, Microsoft tool is doing the same thing for you. Yeah, it's showing that, that I have disabled the Internet Explorer Enhanced Security configuration for administrators, uh, and again, also the office uh, options. So again, it's more about letting you know what's good, what's wrong, and also applying the, the, you know, the good configurations, putting your computer uh, into the, uh, the, the state that we desire. Oh my god. Guys, I just was reading email, my email. Can you switch the slide, please? Yeah, sure. Um, very good news. He's coming tomorrow to the party. 
Anyone fan of Lady Gaga? <coughs> she is tomorrow going to be here. So if you're in Twitter, please start to tweet out uh, Lady Gaga, and I think Steve Ballmer is also coming tomorrow to the party. So I think it's going to be fun. You just got that email? Yeah, uh, I just received the email. Um, if you don't, sorry, sir, if you don't like her, at least you can speak to Mr. Boma, maybe. <laughs> All right, that's the link for you to download MSBA. Social engineering. Do you know what social engineering is? Yeah? Social engineering, look at this. There is no patch for human stupidity. Please keep this in mind. You can get U.S. Army in front of your company. You can do whatever you like, all kinds of physical and computer security, if you got a dumb receptionist who talks too much. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you got not the U.S. Army, also the Russian Army, or the, the NATO, whatever. It's not secure enough. We cannot patch humans. So social engineering is the art of deception. A few minutes ago, uh, I made up that Mr. Ballman and Lady Gaga is coming. You believe me. Why? Because I'm going to speak about you here. I'm speaking of in front of 300 people here. No. I was basically giving you wrong information, make you believing it. I wish she was coming. Uh, anyway, so it was just a small social engineering attack example. Make you believe. Um, I wish uh, I used a different example, but like, I was going to say, what is if I said, guys, Tacket has been canceled. Oh my god, everyone is going home now. You know, you will believe me. Why? Because I'm contracted by Microsoft and I shouldn't lie in a recorded session, right? But you should not trust anyone when it's come to your security. So, w social engineering is hard to detect because it's based on human. Uh, by the way, I didn't call you stupid, please don't get me wrong, okay? <laughs> Um, in the previous slide, but I was just giving an example how humans can be explored. There is, because it's human-based, and because we can patch our minds, it's hard to detect. There is no specific software hardware. There is a couple of good websites, which I want to show you quickly. You can come to socialengineering.org, the highly recommended website, and this has the portal, which, um, which is giving you many recommendations about social engineering, the framework. There are a couple of companies uh, giving some software, trying to protect you against phishing attacks. Please come to this website a little bit later. Explore it. Highly recommend it. So what else can we do to protect our servers? You should wear security glasses. I can't say anyone anymore. So a glasses which is different to your normal. You should look things with your security professional eyes. So you should start to look for excuses. Don't forget, sorry, for weaknesses. Don't forget the old excuse is not an excuse anymore. Why? Because the hacker is not going to say, oh, it's Friday 5 PM. Uh, so what's your name again? Luis wants to go home. His wife is waiting for him. It's the anniversary. I hacked him Monday morning. No. What is if he launched or she launched an attack and because of a vulnerability in your system, the system crashes? Do you think you can go home? Your boss is going to say, don't worry. You got a wedding coming up. We fix the uh, system tomorrow. No, right? So that's why you should take sec security now. When it comes to security, not two minutes later. Two minutes later is two minutes already late. Someone can come in that two minutes. I know this is a very extreme example, but you never know. You know, the old excuses. Tools to harden your computers. We got the security compliance manager. It is basically helping you to merge your, the best practices. It is giving you the customization options and helping you to monitor, verify your service. Again, there is a link ID which I underlined. Please go, have a look. It's free for Microsoft for you to harden your servers, best practices, uh, to keep your servers, your networks up to date. Have you met Sir, by the way, before? Sir, the security 
intelligence report from Microsoft. If you want to be a security professional, you have to spend at least minimum, minimum, minimum one hour on the internet, not on Facebook, uh, on the internet <laughs> looking to security websites. Sir is again, there is the link, marksa.com security slash sir. Sir is giving us more than 600 million, uh, based on data from 600 million uh, computers, on vulnerabilities, malware, and etc. You can go to Sir website. Seriously, this is one of my most favorite websites. You just type it in. It is giving you many how-to videos, many tools, cave findings, references. You can download the intelligence report, which has been updated often. That's the report, by the way. Uh, you can sit down and read it and learn more about what's going on. It is giving you basically a life cycle of what is going on in the world based on security. It is checking the organizations, the software, the people. Brings a report for you, for you to read, and hopefully you will go and read it and learn more about security. There are, of course, many other websites which you can go and, and learn about it. By the way, we've done demos. How was the first part? I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah? Now, who is using all these tools? Hands, please. All these tools. One out of two, three hundred people here. So it's available for free, but we are not using it. When I say security now, I proved to you, I hope I proved to you how easy it is to harden your service. Don't forget, everything starts from one computer. Then the network comes. So if you can secure your computers, your service, you will secure everything. By the way, thank you very much, sir. I'll give you a stick. I, give it to him. I hope I won't hit the gentleman here. I'll leave it here, OK? <laughs> All right, it's time to do penetration testing. I'm a licensed penetration tester, and I told you I do teach penetration testing classes. If someone told me, I'm, you know, I was a little kid once as well. I was a gray hacker, you know, gray head hacker. You know, I was trying to make a couple of cool stuff when I was little, when I didn't know about the laws. Then computing wasn't that popular. Then security was not that. Uh, I mean, still, many people, they don't take care of security. Penetration testing is basically hacking for money. A company comes to you. I never thought 20, 15 years ago that a company is going to come to me. Can you please hack us? And I pay you lots of money. <laughs> lots of money. It's a simulated attack. The difference between me and a hacker is I will do it to find out the holes and warn the company so they can close the holes. The hacker, yeah, they're going to warn you with a sign. Remember, in the first part, hacked, hacked, hacked. They're going to warn you with a sign, hacked, which is, sir, you're missing that anniversary with your wife. You have to stay back, Luis. So why penetration testing? Penetration testing because it's going to help us to identify the threats facing your assess. You will have a full report at the end. It's part of penetration testing. What is going on in your network? Who's working in a large corporation with more than two, 3,000 computers? Hands, please. Many of you. Uh, any security architect here in this session? On this? Uh, any security architect? That's security my architect. Germanish, you know, German English. No? Do, do we got anyone? Here we go. Sir, uh, do you really know? Do you really control everything in your organization? Or you just write the policies and make sure and hope and force their users, including yourself, are following it? Second option, right? So this is going to help you to identify the threat. What else? It's going to help you to return on IT security investment. I always forget the whole. <laughs> it's Rossi. Basically, 
it is going to help you to do a, a, a assessment in your network. And this way, you're going to identify, resolve the issues, and go to your anniversary with your wife, Louis. What's going to happen is, if the policy has been implemented, it's going to lock the environment, and it's going to make harder for a hacker to come in. The comprehensive assessment. It will make sure that all your policies, procedures, design implementations has been well implemented. That's your job, right, sir? What else? Anyone uh, implemented ISO 27000 or 14000? If you're working in a banking industry, health insurance industry, or government, you implement ISMS, which is Information Security Management System. And there, we got a simple life cycle, which is PDCA, which is plan, do, check, and act. You should plan your policy according the laws, according the company benefits. Then you should sit down and write the policy. You should make sure that the users, with end users means everyone, including yourself, OK? Uh, it's following that. You should keep an eye on it, because we know every day there are something new coming out. We should uh, act, improve the policy, and implement it. If we can do that, we can easily gain and maintain certification. And if someone comes, I do also lead auditing based on IT security. When I go to companies, I do check from A to Z everything. I got many different clothes at home. Sometimes I be the air conditioner man, a t-shirt, go to the reception. Seven out of 10 times, I could go in without, hi, I'm coming from the, uh, from the air conditioning company. I need to check the air conditions. Yeah, I go in the room. Oh, I don't have access. They just let me in, believe it or not. Or you go with the heavy boxes. Oh, excuse me, can you open the door for me? They let you in without asking why. We want to be more kind than rude, but sometimes, especially in the security terms, it's better to be rude. We were all young. Remember when we were all young? I don't know so if you remember you were young. Just kidding. Um, don't get angry, please. Um, they used to tell us, hey, you know what? Don't get chocolate from a stranger. Why? We didn't know what is inside the chocolate, right? This is penetration testing, physical penetration testing. It's like giving the chocolate for the network security. Once I got physical access, it's much harder to, to, uh, to, to get directed. A good example is, I know it's going to be sound funny. One of the main computers in Sydney Airport was stolen a couple of years ago. What does this mean? Anyone went to Sydney, not the auditorium, to real Sydney before? Just me? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. People in the back, yeah. Um, we got one at the back. So you went to Sydney airport, they scan your passport. What does this mean? If they got the server, which holds the database, that means they got a copy of your password. I don't know if you remember, last year in Dubai, someone was, uh, you know, uh, someone was killed and they found that it was done with the Australian passport. But that guy was in Melbourne, sitting in Australia. Someone used his identity with a different picture and killed someone. And the uh, Interpol was trying to <laughs> you know, uh, arrest him. At the end, of course, it was obvious that he, that was not him. So sometimes a security leak can cause big troubles. And like killing someone on behalf of you. And I'm going to kill someone, but you're going to be arrested. That's a good job. Evaluate the efficiency of your security devices. I use Astara Security Gateway, Forefront. You know, net a solution. I got a hardware and possible software solution to make sure that I'm covered from many aspects. We got many. So what should be tested? This is another question. Shortly, I'm going to show you a demo. But what should the test is based on the risk assessment? So you should do a risk assessment before you decide, OK, I don't have an e-commerce server. All right, let's do a penetration testing about e-commerce server. No, 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 no. 
Um, you're going to sit down, do a risk assessment based on occurrence and impact. You're going to define the risk, and then you're going to launch your attack, your simulated attack against your mail, DNS, firewall, or password policy. Don't forget, I told uh, you a few minutes ago, a penetration testing is between 30 to 400 hours. A good one takes even more, depends on the company. It is usually costing lots of money. If you see my car, you'll understand. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we got many different access points to our network. So a good penetration tester is, has to make sure that not just the front doors, also the back doors are secured. Like the internet gateways, the modems. If you get wireless, the wireless networks, the physical entry, and the social engineering. What is making a good penetration testing? Me? No. The policies. You should define the scope from A to Z. Don't forget. As a licensed penetration tester, you can be liable to bring a server down as well. Can you imagine you hire me, I come there, while I'm simulating a test attack on your database, I bring it down, and it is during business hours, 2,000 people are waiting for me uh, until I fix it back? No, right? So we should choose the suitable test, and shortly I'm going to show you how you can do that. Please keep in mind, Penetration testing is not a guarantee of security. It is not, uh, it is not um, measuring everything from A to Z, but it is giving you proof of concept. Uh, it's not giving you proof of concept. It's giving you idea. So if there is a zero-day atta zero attack, and which is not known, please go to Marcus Murray sessions uh, this afternoon. He's going to show you how a cloud can be hacked with a zero-day attack. What is a hacking methodology? Most of our, our males here, when you go to your club, for example, and you're looking for get dating, you know, you go, you scan the number, then you select that girl that you like. Oh, she's nice. You start to dance, you try to, you know, this is the scanning part. You try to get an eye contact. Once you get the eye contact, you will try, you know, to dance, talk to her. Here we go, you talk to her. Now you, you want to maintain the access. Hey, can I get the phone number, please? You get the phone number, and Luis, you were married, right? You have to make sure your wife doesn't know, oh, this is recorded, my wife might listen as well. <laughs> uh, you want to sure that your wife doesn't catch you after, please don't do this, just an example. You have to clear the task, sorry, the tracks. So you have to walk in the snow, but n not leave any footprints. Hacking is not different, okay? It's the same methodology. We got footprinting, scanning, enumeration, gaining access, escalating privileges is the same. You know, when you see this girl, hi, you are a stranger, then you dance, you ask her to go out, now you're not a stranger anymore. You escalated your privileges to be the boyfriend. Once you hack in, you are, you are no one, but you are, will try to get the admin privileges to kick the admin out, make it end user, and it's going to be your territory. The tools on your, depends on where you're sitting, the tools on the side, okay, are a couple of cool tools again, which are available for free, not ping of that, okay, um, which, uh, which is giving you not GFI land as well, but up to five IP, it's free. You can just use these tools to follow the hacking methodology. Now I'm going to show you shortly again. Limitation of a penetration testing. Please keep in mind, it is valid only for, I'm checking the time quickly. It is valid only for, it's, uh, for time. So you can't just say, I got a test, I'm um, say for the next uh, 10, 10 years. Well, you can do an external testing, an internal testing. Well, what that mean is uh, you might get a gray box or black box or white box testing, which means White box testing is you are inside the network, you know everything, you just test if everything is as it should be. Gray box is you do some testing, but you don't know everything. You will try to escalate, you will try to enumerate and get the password. Black box is you're sitting outside, you got the permission in writing, and you launch a test. Sometimes your ISP might block you, which is 
most often happen to us, and we have to call them and say, you know what, we are a penetration testing company, this is the agreement, this and that, we go through. What are the common penetration testing techniques? Again, um, I'm not going to cover everything. Quickly, you can do passive research, open source monitoring, network, network mapping, footprinting, spoofing, sniffing, Trojan attack, Bruce first attack, dictionary attack. Again, um, the main important thing is to understand that there is three paths. The pre-attack, attack, and post-attack paths. In the pre-attack paths, what we're going to do is we're going to define our goals. We, do, we will do reconnaissance. What is this? Collecting uh, information about the target. We all use who is tools or network tools, right? We select our target. We go to Bing, Google, whatever, Yahoo. We search our target. We will try to get the information as much as possible. There is two ways of uh, recon. One is the passive recon. You don't do anything uh, to the system directly. You will try to do everything remotely via publicly available information. Social engineering. Dumpster driving. Like, what is dumpster driving? Basically, looking the rubbish bins. I don't know if you know. Anyone works with Oracle here? OK, then let me give you this example. I don't know if you know. Many, uh, in year 2000, a couple of Oracle hired guys were catch in Redmond while they're dumpster diving the rubbish bins and trying to get information. If you, if you bing it, you will see that it is a happen true story. Social engineering, I'll give you an example. Then we got the active reconnaissance. There we will use the tools. We will check the open ports and that. In the attack pass, this is where you're going to use the tools, as I'm going to show you shortly. And we'll try to escalate the privileges, as I explained a few minutes ago. The methodology, again, look at this. We got huge of them. You can download the slides later. OK? Um, we will get information, get a recognizability analysis, external penetration testing, firewall penetration testing, blah, 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 blah. Please have a look in the slides later. I prefer to do some demonstrations. As I, as I said, this is a five, it's a huge content. But I'm giving you the wine testing. Hopefully, you will like the wine and do your own. I will give you all the resources shortly. You will your own research for that. Some websites for you. Let's do some demonstration. You can change here. Yeah. I forgot again. Huh? There's an old saying: it's, "It's better to say sorry than to ask for permission." We need to have that in mind. Come on. So back to MBSA, you show how uh, Microsoft Western Security Analyzer was doing a vulnerability scanning. It was free. Now we got the advanced edition of that. This is the brand new GFI Langard, which is a commercial product. And I got a full one year license for a person who will ask good question at the end. And look at this. Current vulnerability level is too high. Why? Because I done a couple of scans. And my, in my scans, I, I noticed that my computer has missing patching. MBSA was doing the same thing, right? But this one is going one step ahead and showing you a detailed report on what, when happened. Here's my XP. It was audited. I can just go basically, for example, uh, to my XP and run a custom scan. Come on. Here we go. You can select the target IP or name. You can enter the username and password, or you can just uh, ask GFRLAN to do that. You click scan. It's going to scan the computer and give us a very detailed report. While this is scanning, OK, I don't want to lose time. I want to show you a couple of other good products as well. Like, let's start with vulnerabilityassessment.co.uk. This is a really nice website. Oh, look at this. He knew that it was going to be demonstrated. Uh, it's a really good website. 
which is giving you all the tools in one hand. If you want to do penetration testing, if you want to do hacking methodology, you can just come here and get the right tools and do it. We got Sir, we got SustainAngineering.org, and as American, look, I'm Australian and I do visit this website here and there very often. I'm pretty sure when I say most of you, can I see hands? Who, who is going to this website and checking or who done it at least once before? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very few people. Thank you for everyone. You can come here, get lots of information about the current vulnerabilities, the current uh, public safety issues. Try this. Try this is a free fr uh, penetration testing framework as well, which you can use with Metasploit. I would highly recommend Metasploit as well. Please go and have a look into this stuff a little bit later. Let me see how is my scan going. Um, as usual, demo doesn't work. <laughs> All right, uh, but I got a B plan, don't worry. I done the scan before. I can, uh, you can see that. No, you can't. All right, in my last scan, Everything worked, and it was showing me all the vulnerabilities. Here we go. I can see the vulnerabilities, the open ports, the low, low vulnerabilities, the potential vulnerabilities. Look at this. User attack had never logged on. User demo never logged on. I can see the missing patches. Hey, there is two malware vulnerabilities. My antivirus is not up to date, which is Microsoft Security Essentials. I have to go and update it. My firewall has been disabled. So it is going and giving many comprehensive details about not just the open ports. Here we go. The ports, which is open. I can see, hey, look, it even shows itself. Langat is using 1170. The software. Look, the web browser is IE8. The firewall is Windows Firewall. The Internet Explorer, the anti spyware, and information about the hardware, the tunneling devices. Mm, USB port is open. I can just plug a little USB stick and dump my virus in the boot sector, plant my rootkit basically, hide myself, and get information. So, tools like that are really, really cool. No, I, mean, I find it cool. I hope you too. What else? You can get system information and much more on. And this is another software, which is called CoImpact. Again, uh, because the scan is taking lots of time, what I've done is I did run the scans for you before. Let me explain quickly what CoImpact does for you. Remember, we had six important steps. When you go to a pub, you scan the, the girls. I mean, depends on your sexual choice, OK? Uh, you scan the you or you you ma'am you scan the boys, maybe me. No, no, just kidding. Uh, hello, honey. I'm just giving example, giving message to my wife. All right, just kidding. What you scan, then you will try to gain access. Then you will. It's the same here. Look at this network information gathering. So then it's the network attack and penetration, local information gathering, privileges escalation. Clean up and attend the report. Uh, yeah, the report was not part of the uh, pub, but I hope this is giving you the, the example. All what you have to do is click in network information gathering, click in next, select a target, could be internal or external, could be a single IP range or more, and run the scan based on your choices. I'm not going to run the scan because it's kicked me out from the network. Microsoft IT is doing a very well job. It doesn't allow me to send me any vulnerabilities. Here we go. This is a public IP address, as you can see. It is one of our servers. And now, let me go to network. You can do it based on network, client, and web applications. This is the Client applications and 
Where is that? Here we go. It is using Microsoft IES 7.5. It's an online scan. I mean, I need the IP address. How can I find the IP address? By the way, let me demonstrate you this. I'm pretty sure most of you know it already. Networktools.com. Anyone ever hit this website? So you can come and find, for example, erdalesker.com. That's my blog. And I want to do a who is. OK. I don't like this guy. And he gave me a bad demonstration. It's time to bring him down. OK. So I told you I'm from Australia, but do you know my address? No. Of course, for this demonstration purposes, I went and opened it. Look at this. I worked with you training, and this is my, my address, my physical address. What a bad practice. I'm teaching you penetration testing, but I'm not following the practice. I, I'm giving my address, my email address, my phone numbers. And they're all true. <laughs> so don't forget to hire me. Just kidding. Um, look at this. My public IP address of my blog. My name service. So I'll copy this. Uh, CoinPack is not a hacking software. Okay? It's a penetration testing software. And run the scan and learn what kind of operating system I'm using. Learn the open ports. I've done many, many scans. Run vulnerability reports based on your client side. Remember, I was saying it's hard to detect human stability. Core Impact is giving you a couple of options where you can send phishing emails. You can send an XSS cross-site script um, attacks mm -hmm. via email to your, to your end users, and you sit down and wait how many people are going to fall into the trap. Come on. Who never had training, internal training with the end users? Who never told the end users, don't click into the links? And how many times they listen to you? This is a perfect example. You can send the email. They can, you will see if they click to the link because it's going to send you an email, and you can take the necessary option. What else? We've got two minutes left. You can go to websites like brighthobbies.com here. I run the SQL injection. When I say I run, what I've all done is basically come here, web applications, create a, you know, I said create a new host. I came here, new host. I select my IP range either from here, and I just click next, 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 next. What happened is here, it found some SQL vulnerabilities. This is an online purchasing company. By the way, um, again, I, I'm looking after the security, and I opened that port, which is closed now, yesterday, okay, for the demonstration purposes. Next time, when you enter your credit card details, be careful where you enter it, because there was an SQL injection open for an SQL injection. And if you enter your details there, together with that company, the bad guy, uh, the bad guy is also going to have access to it. What else? Uh, we got one more demo, demo. here. Yeah, you switch to one. From Sys Internals. Anyone never heard about Sys Internals? This is journals, great tools, Mark right? Mark Rosinovich, look, he got a beautiful session tomorrow, but you're going to prefer my one and come here. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Mark Rosinovich, he's a technical fellow. Go to sysinternals, marksoft.com slash sysinternals. 12 megabytes of download, many different tools. Can you quickly show all the available tools? Yeah, They're sure. all for free for you to use. Yeah, we have a lot of tools about uh, networking utilities, process utilities. I know that you are all familiar with the tools. Uh, but I wanted to show you uh, basically access enumeration, which is basically a tool that once you have access to the, to the physical machine, you can just uh, scan a specific directory or, or the registry. If you want to scan, let's say, uh, Windows, you will get uh, all the read and, and, and write permissions and what the users and group have permissions to that specific file. Well, or, just single click, right? Huh? You don't, just double click and it opens the application. Do, do, double click and, and scan. Or if I want scary. to do it on the registry, I can select the, the class uh, and the, from the registry and hit um, scan, and I will get all the permissions so I can, um, you know, so very important information. Another tool uh, that we can use is TCP view. 
so we can see all the ports that are available in a very uh, cool uh, graphic user interface. Uh, uh, keep in mind, hackers will use with ports. So you can go to hackerwatch.org. They will use with ports to gain access into your computers, OK? Yeah. And, and the last one is uh, our runs. With, with our runs, once you have access to the computer, you can uh, basically have all the information from, from that machine. And you can run all these tools uh, remotely if you have access to the computer uh, using PS, exec. All these tools are available for free uh, in the system journal side. Uh, I got 20, 27 more seconds. No, no. Uh, let me use it. Otherwise, they're going to kick us out from here. This is the website, recommended website. My blog, of course. <laughs> Uh, vulnerability assessment, please download, download the slides later again. If you got any questions, uh, my email was at the end. This is uh, Marks of Trustworthy Computing uh, websites. Highly recommended for you guys to keep an eye on it. If you got a uh, question, my email address and Elias' email address was in the cover of the slide. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to email us. I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, please feel the evaluation, and, and you will get the chance to win. Uh, Cool several products like soon Xbox 360 and another swag. You mean the emails? Yeah. Sure. Uh, just press home. Uh, can I take you offline here? And I got some presents. Please come here. I'm gonna take you offline because we use all our time. Please come here. The, the next session preparation has to start. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.